Hello world, welcome to another edition of Enough Talk, the L5R video blog past pod, soon to be on Dang. the Imperial Herald, it's, I understand. That, it, here's hoping. I am Jesse, my best pickup line is, hey baby, what are your thoughts on Heidegger Grabowski? And I'm joined <laughs> by Paul Frivolous Purchases Ashman. Paul, how you doing? I'm very well. I'm sorry, I'm having some trouble hearing you. Let me pedal closer on my electronic bicycle. Uh, I love that you scooped that one up. Is it full in half and everything too? Is it is it portable and green? It's not. It's not like pick up and carry portable. It has. It sort of makes attempts to be sort of compactable. You can you know take a couple inches off here, a couple inches off there. I can put it in the car and like drive it around more easily than I could <laughs> say a normal mountain bike. Oh, and you shouldn't make fun. Electric bikes, that's the wave of the future, man, because we're much too fat to be able to just bicycle our way places. Uh, so in cities like New York, they're going to have to get electric bikes where they can bicycle for a while and then let the technology do its thing. Does it fit on the rack on the front of the bus? You know, I don't actually own a car. I'm too green for that. So I take public that's transportation right. everywhere like a man of the people. Uh, and so uh, I need sadly, to know... I live in one of those areas where, you know, the, the bill came through and they're like, well, you can pay another $20 a year to allow bus service. And everyone's like, no, no, that's way too much. You're, you're asking for too much money there. We're not going to pay $20 a year to let those people take the bus on in. And I yes, thought, they always would say those people. Those people. I thought that the Lansing bus system went all the way out there. Uh, it goes just on the main line. It stops generally at Okemos, actually. So there's some uh, Southeast Michigan geography for those of you who are not in the loop. Yeah, that's right. Wait, wait, I think my neck is, is shifting. Is this a hard turn? Ouch! <laughs> Ouch. Ah! Yeah, this is a quick one, though. We've only been Ooh. yammering for two minutes. Usually we go to about five, but we can do all five R. What are you playing over there? This is a Mantis deck, um, and it's, it's a sort of – it's an evolution – of the Philippines deck that we love so much. I love that deck. And when we, say Phil when we say Philippines deck, we basically mean a fate deck that runs a bunch of followers. In this case, I've self-selected the followers to all involve ranged attacks. Uh, I can even go a little bit deeper. I could play the one with the repeatable, but my two sort of fun ones right now are Shield Wall and Watch Commander. And uh, I might I might add another six. So I might add the repeatable range three cavalry guy, but I don't have the cavalry traits, so I don't like overpaying for the force. And also, there's the uh, Colonial Conscripts, which I took out in deference to you, because I thought you were going to play the uh, the farm, and I didn't want to just blow you out. That seemed uncouth. Well, so on. it's got a bunch of followers. In this case, uh, they all make range attacks. So the idea is you get your gold on one. By it, it very, it's, it's a different take on the deck in that it actually puts up two personalities, and then off to Walmart you go. And the, the whole thing that makes it work, or allows it to work, is Lonely Dojo. So you can attach followers in your limited phase and still have a productive dynasty phase. Uh, and I got some reserve guys here. I think everybody's got the naval trait. There's a few little nonsensical things here. This guy can naval range three. Um, and then I've got move back in effects, champions tactics, water earth. And sudden movement. I am playing the ring package because that's just a thing that we're doing in almost all of our decks right now. This one, I really like it because I have the card draw on the Fruitful Port of the Mantis. But because I have the card draw on the Fruitful Port, I might actually end up cutting these for just more followers or some other generic action. <coughs> uh, I'm a little soft to unit bow, but there's not very much of it. There's basically pack tactics. And then I've got three reprisals as just a consolidation to the fact that I've got a bunch of attachments. And it is hilariously, and this in, in some other videos that I play a bunch of cheap spells and items in, it's plus card per unit. So Shield Wall does get the bonus, which is always a thing that makes me smile. But it's a way to sort of, you know, if, if I somehow fall behind, this is one of the few cards in the format that lets me catch back up. I'm not sure it's better than playing army like a tide because i'm gonna get these big units but it's something that i want to give a try to um the idea is that if i have one big unit and it's got three or four followers on it and i can play reprisal offensively that's still plus four force which is a pretty valuable battle ability 
Uh, Dynasty side, you will notice that I have personalities with the naval traits. Some of them are scouts, but I mean, really, they're all just platforms for my attachments. Uh, I do have one funny thing I'm doing at the goal. I'm playing 42 cards. I'm playing three second city market with one coastal lane and one merchant atoll. That's kind of cute. Giving it a test. Most of the time, they'll probably be digging out, you know, Bawa Kabune to get a Kabune, but there are certain draws where I could see it coming together in such a way. So, so I think the first thing is that if anybody is confused or interested in this Philippines deck we're talking about, we have done a video with this deck already. Um, so go back into the archives and look for that one. We talk a lot about the strategy behind it, how it all works, what Lonely Dojo's role in the deck is. Similar <clears throat> similar ideas, different decks, because I'm not going first. I don't have a Kage Sensei, so I have to be a little bit more cautious about diversifying methods. But I do get a, a sort of better stain power, right? I get to develop my gold really solidly. I have a, a box that lets me keep drawing my gas. Yeah, so the box is a huge difference. One of the so the the Philippines deck that we we played earlier was an arc deck, and I was apprehensive about shifting it from arc to strict because you lose House of Prophecy and you lose the fallen Diadoji Destined guy, and yeah. all of those cards put together made a really powerful draw engine for you. But in the Mantis box, you've just got the draw always there. You can always have more gas. Yep. The other thing you had mentioned to me before the video was that you felt like this deck played slightly differently in that it spread its followers out a little more. It does, and that's that depending on how you want to go, it's a strength or a negative. Um, I like this deck's ability to get to two province crushing units faster than the crane deck because it often gets two guys on its second turn, and that's something that crane just can't really do easily. I guess my follow-up comment is that you're still playing the shield wall and the watch commanders that were there for the deck that goes all in on one. And do you have any thoughts well, on that? Yeah, so I think the shield wall you can probably talk me off of. Uh, I just think that my, the watch commander is a sort of acknowledgement that if I lose a guy with a follower and one other follower, it's a big enough hit. But yeah, like I said, those could probably be other followers, and almost certainly they will be at various testing points. Um, it's just that, you know, when you're transitioning over, there's a tendency to leave as much of the deck intact as you can. And I think it's just <clears throat> laziness rearing its head. Um, the, other, the other thing I wanted to say before I move to my deck is to talk about the card that you're not playing, uh, Disappearing World Style. If you think it has a place in a deck like this, since you don't have a Kage Sensei. I, I don't have any good run-home effect other than water and, I guess, the occasional sudden movement. And it's it's something to consider. My main thought was, why do I need to run home, right? So that would facilitate, like, a defend, shoot you, run home. But I feel like, for the most part, I'm just an aggressive deck. I'm just going to be attacking and killing all your things, and I'm not going to need to run home. That's sort of like, I, it's just a fate space. I'd rather have the cards that let me sort of push you into the battle and win the battle and not have to worry about getting the heck out of there. Um, I will mention quickly, I have Gadayu Sensei. That's just, if I ever really need to shoot something big, I can still spread my followers out and up it a little bit. It doesn't come up very often. Cool, cool. So, <clears throat> I'm playing a deck that we've seen before. This was... Uh, Except the screw up my naval guy here, which is why there's only two. Anyway. This is the Phoenix Hunter deck. We saw it once before. It got completely rolled by... I forget what. But it was embarrassing. Lion. Yeah, Lion. It was Lion. It was Lion. It was bad. There was a lot of problems with that deck. Um, first and foremost being I was running a bunch of fortifications, which are terrible. Um... I'm still running three Carpenter's Shrine, but all these gold-producing fortifications seem interesting. They have powerful abilities. I'm just not sure it's there yet because the risk the is Lion not Honor deck by the reward. Be. So the Lion Honor deck, which will come in a different video, has the Dynasty guy who can open slash Dynasty straighten a fortification. So he allows you to get sort of more immediate use out of them. And so I think he facilitates that strategy. But yeah, so the problem of like I attach it and then it sits there as a big target, it's just the liability is pretty high. And what's the bonus? Oh, I get a three for three holding. Well, play a Jade Works, man. 
Yeah, and I I like a few. Like running three carpenters shine isn't a problem. The problem is running okay. ten fortifications, and then your entire gold team is attached to a province, and then they attack the province, and you lose. It's like they triple explosives you and take a province, and there's no way to recover from that, which we saw in the video that we played. Do you think you fell into, and I think this is a common deck building mistake, where it's like, I have these new personalities in a line in the sand, and they say fortification in my in my text box, ergo, let's play some fortifications? Um, you can say that I fell victim to it. What I thought was Akasha Beiru had a very powerful ability. And Still a great card. Still I, playing three. And my first logic with it was... Well, let's build a deck that fully that, that can fully be ta takes advantage of this powerful ability. Like, let's see if you build a deck to take that to its logical conclusion. You just turn it up to eleven. Is that deck any good? And in this case, the answer was no. But in a lot of cases, the answer is yes. And then you can start saying, well, okay, what can I? How much can we bring it back? There's, there's there really is something here. There's really is something good. So and there is and this is something we talk a lot about individually when new cards come out. Things like official sanction comes out. You always want to try to test a card at its most powerful. You want to, like, if you think a card might be really good, try to manufacture the situations where it's at its absolute best. And if a card is at its absolute best and still doesn't give you the payoff you need, then that's valuable playtest data. And you can say, okay, well, this doesn't, this doesn't take me where I want to go. And that's something we've had a lot of experience with. Uh, we, were, we have a, a sort of recursive, infinite, combo-y kill deck with young sensei and we've played it a bunch of times and and after playing it what you know i don't know Five three dozen times, times yeah. yeah we just sort of said okay like so we got everything going and this is exactly the point we want it to be and then nothing and happened it's not good enough yeah it just didn't and do like anything. that that happens sometimes sometimes you have an idea in your head and you just you know uh spinder wind is one of my favorite examples of the Essence of the Void put Shadow Dragon out on turn two deck that we played and we had a lot of fun with, but at the end of the day, that just wasn't enough. Yeah, especially in that mid uh, yeah. Emperor environment. It'd definitely be <clears throat> enough now. So, yeah, we moved off it. The one thing about Bearer that is not in this deck that I guess, I guess I'll fess up and say I didn't realize was that PPG does not recruit Bowed. So if you use his open to bring up a PPG, you can gain 200 immediately. Except PPG is a limited, so you can't do that. Well, if I do it on my turn, you can. Oh, during your turn. Yeah, that's fair. So I missed that interaction. I, there probably should be one PPG in this deck somewhere. But I don't know. I'm trying out Alchemy Lab. I think it's terrible, but whatever. It's a two for two. I haven't really crashed <laughs> Strict Gold yet, so I'm trying this two I for two scheme out. We, 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 we need to explore it sort of individually and have a sit-down focus. I feel like a lot of strict gold schemes right now are just sort of like play a bunch of two for twos, hope for the best. Um, and in some cases, I've built my deck around that as I did. Like the crab deck is specifically engineered in that way, and it takes advantage of that scheme really effectively. This deck is just kind of a bunch of two for twos and then these ones, and sort of we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's like Deep Harbor buys other stuff. Temple of Serenity deserves special notice. There was a ruling about the battle ability that does not... You don't have to attach a spell to gain the honor. So yeah, you just need to have the opposed Shugenja. Because there's a period, yeah. So anytime I defend with these up, I'm going to be bowing them to just gain two. Um, sometimes I'll play a spell off of it too, but a lot of times I'll just be bow gain two. Uh, otherwise, there's not a lot to explain. I'm not playing any of the ring package stuff Paul mentioned, which is weird for us, but it didn't feel right in this deck since I've got the card draw off the box. I'm still playing two official sanctions because they're fine in honor decks, I think, as a two-off or maybe a one-off. It's just not this huge bomb that it was before. Yeah, I mean, and it might, it might mm -hmm. do really good value here. Um, and I do think it's still a good card for honor, and if you have PH dishonor decks, it's just not. There's no more interaction. There's no more to do cool shrine to Hachiman, do really powerful things. Yeah, and I mean, what you'll do with it is you attach it on the. You buy a guy on three, you attach it on your opponent's three, and charge it. You charge it on your turn, and then on their second or third attack, you lock a guy down, and it can be useful there. So, like, yeah, that's, that's just... the timing window for it. It's like a turn four or turn five lockdown. Which is fine. You know, it's just... 
Well, you shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking, oh, well, this card was nerfed, so now it sucks. Like, no, it's a fine card. Yeah, I mean, if you, you've you played a fate card to prevent a single personality, like, you know, people play block supply lines. It happens. There you go. Uh, and, yeah, the rest of these are just fate cards. Not much to say about it. So, uh, the a lot of, you know, there's a lot of battle. I see battle on a lot of those cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we're playing a million different spells, all of them. The idea of the deck is just to get into an opposed battle, buy all their shit, tie the battle, and cross. So, you know, we're playing Stones of Purity and Zutengu's Embrace and uh, Awe of the Earth, Fear of the Thunder. These are all just bow guy, bow guy, bow guy, bow guy. Pack Tactics, uh, Versatile Army, bow guy, bow guy, bow guy, and then win. So that's the hope. That's the plan. Okay. I am scooping up my cards and shuffling my deck. And in my case, I hope a lot of those fears say, bow a follower and do nothing else. Yeah, this is going to be an important test game. I think decks that use this sort my of My knowledge of fear is really limited. So, like, if I have a follower, it, bow it bows an unbowed follower, right? But it can't. It can never bow my guy if I have a follower bowed or unbowed. Is that how that works? I think so. Ugh. So if you're one of those people that actually know how fear work, go ahead and hit Jesse up on Twitter or whatever nonsense people just to communicate online I, um, and explain it to him. <laughs> yeah, fear is becoming the banding of L5R pretty rapidly. That's it. We didn't talk at all about courage cards. You should be worried about courage cards or something. They're out there. It's it's like they're so all over the place, and there's no consistency to who's playing them or when. I don't think you can live in fear of that. Uh, I think we decided that there's not like they're not there's not enough really good ones to move the needle yet, right? There's a couple people are playing though the straight in a guy gain an honor. Uh, people are playing the one that removes resilient or re removes force bonuses or penalties. Yeah, that's the one I sort of like. Okay, so I didn't get to do anything with my free gold gear. This is super disappointing. Do I just buy a guy? What happens if I just buy... No, no. So I just buy two holdings uh, and flush these two guys. And I still have my two free gold, which... So I played a 42-card dynasty deck and took it on the chin a little bit. But I got a Kapunic Port and Lonely Dojo, so I don't feel that bad about it. Yeah. I'm also, in your turn two is pretty lackluster, but um, we're getting two guys and gold. So Deep Harper and Genma line up pretty nicely. I wish I could say that was by design, but oh, don't sell yourself short. You know about the little edges. Okay, so this turn, I am flipping, I'm flipping, I got some famous bazaars. Okay, so this turn, I'll buy some more gold and a guy, and it all will come. So I'm going to use my two, I pass two opens. I could give a crap about what you're doing over there. So just like I talked about, this is, the, this is what we do with Sanction. You play it here, and hope for the best. Start getting its, getting its charge counters on. So that was my free two. So now I can go... Probably famous. See what I flip again. Well, there's nothing like buying a seven gold cost guy and getting no value out of him other than three fours. Uh, come on, card I want. Well, yep. I can't really afford to not buy one of these guys. So I buy one of these guys. I have two reserve options. We're going to flush one for sure. I probably am going to declare an attack next turn. Second city market is not efficient gold, so it gets flushed. Oh, wait. And the table is yours. Remember when guys just made ranged four or five attacks? And then you read Tersuchi Taito and. Just yeah. Good times. So we're going to use our box. Look at three cards. And you guys cannot see these cards. This is one of the downsides of our setup. But 
I found a Stones of Purity I'm going to put into my hand, discarding Yojimbo of Earth. Mm, I should put myself back up to two honor. Straighten my guy and lobby for the favor. Your Jimbo Verve actually relevant here. Uh, protects against yeah. ranged attacks. Shockingly relevant. Not shocking at all, actually. Just a really good card. So, it might have been a mistake to throw that. I could have thrown like this instead, but... We're just seeing what happens. I guess my actual analysis is because this costs gold, and my gold is sort of all earmarked this turn and probably next turn because I need to start building board presence, not playing Dirtle Wordle spells. And I'm okay taking the five gold spell because that's kind of like where my end game's going. You need those stones of purity to eventually win the game. I do not need a Jimbo of Earth necessarily to win the game. Yes, I did just say Dirtle Wordle. I apologize. You're up. Okay, so he's got two guys. Uh, five and seventy to six. I mean, so we start by looking at our gold. We didn't flip any more people. So we start. We start sending ourselves off to Walmart. Um, I will begin by attaching an Ashigaru Spearman, which is one of my favorite followers here because both a ranged one attack and one four. Such a good rate, man. Let me tell you. I'm gonna straighten my guy. <laughs> and we attach a spearman. Attach a ward of air. Well, that pees in my that pees in my cereal ever so slightly. So let's stop and take a moment. So I've got ten gold, so I can drop down and buy two personalities. Now, obviously, I could just load up, attack, take a province, and feel really good <laughs> about the chance. Of, uh, of getting in there and stealing that province. I, I just I have enough shoot effects that either kill a number of things or he would just let it go. Uh, what I don't have a good answer to at all is official sanction. And, and losing, if I, you know, committing more cards to the board to take a province, one province doesn't win me the game, and then he sanctions me down... Uh, though he won't have any more tokens once he does it. It's tough. I don't want to run into multiple sanctions. So, I acknowledge the fact that he's only at 9 honor. I have a little bit of time here. Uh, I forgot to move and 3 I, last year. I'm sorry. Okay, he's only at 12 honor. So, I go to Dynasty, I and I use my 10 gold to buy these two guys. And I'll keep Boxable Guy, because good Boxable Force. And I draw two cards. Oops. I'm making all kinds of silly little mistakes here. Flip, 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 flip. <clears throat> okay. So. Yeah, I'll just keep sipping and sitting on that reserve guy because, you know, I'm such a script. So I'm going to gain one for sure. I pass through the phase. And then... Hmm. Those guys are just force. Yep. He's a cook, Captain Hook, Judge. Won't you throw the book? I'll charge sanction again. Ah. Look at three cards in my box. The movement and energy of the sea. This is the heart of the mantis. You cannot combat the seas, and you cannot fight back against a storm. You can only endure and pray you do not earn its wrath further. So if I was seeking the way, I'll put that in my hand. This is not your path, friend. Come with me, and we shall plumb the mysteries of the universe together. And attach it. Thank you for all of your input, Paul. That's it. Uh, straighten my idiot, and I think I gained two more. Now let me just recount. One, five, two, four. No, no. So yeah, I just dropped down. 
I'm getting two guys and a gold. And getting three. I got to admit, it's not getting better. Well, it can't be that way all the time. Okay, so I gotta move in. So we start loading up our guys. Off to Walmart we go. There is an expert archers for Captain Hook the first. I'm gonna put down a Sutengu's embrace. Captain Hook the second. This one. Astute viewers will notice that my lonely dojo now makes four gold, leaving me with seven gold, which is enough to purchase a personality from my provinces. Ta-da! Fear the thunder. I was gonna save this for some sort of sneakiness on his turn after he did a sanction thing, but I might need it for the battle. So here is a ring of air. Okay. <clears throat> Pass. Everybody attacks the Carpenter Shrine province that holds a personality. So, you have to decide if this is the time to move in on defense. I don't think it is. It actually gets a little better for us next turn because we can lock down his unit with two followers. Uh, or we can lock down a unit, a big unit with follower. I'm not, def not going to defend here. Okay. Yay. Success. I dead. I could have, like, defended and shot off my ward of air and seeking home, but it wouldn't have saved the province. It would have been throwing my ward of air for two honor, which it's a tough sell. Okay. I buy this guy all the way up to four honor. He makes a ranged attack or something. I flush this guy. I keep the cheap guy because he's a cheap guy. He's good force rate. And, you know, one day I'll get more holdings. Someday, man, someday. That's right. <clears throat> These cards are all reasonable. I don't hate my hand. So my 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 great hope that all of his cards would be unreasonable seems to not have come through for me. So in game one, do that for sure. I pass <laughs> a lot. Sir, pass a lot. He passes a lot. Sir, pass a lot. He passes a lot. Good song. It, you know, going straight to the it top. It was gold, man. Gold! Uh, one of these guys is going to get a stone. Some I'll have one. you know. Speaking of songs, did you hear the uh, Prince dropped an album this last week? I don't know if that international news makes it all the way out there. No, it did not. I'm really excited about it. Rolling Stone gave it three out of four stars. They don't know. They just don't know how to rate anything. <laughs> they just give it up. It's, uh, it's two the, albums. I'm going to lock down one of the Captain Hooks. Some more for Okay, so there he goes. He finally used it. So I use my Ring of Air and try really hard to straighten, but it gets negated. Right, and <clears throat> that's not so good for me, but there's, I don't know. It's an onboard trick that I missed. It's a funny interaction, but there's not a lot of It's great, to too, because I knew it was going to happen, and I was like, oh, this is going to be great, and I'm going to get him. Yeah, there's no way, like, it just, air beats you pretty good. Like, I, if I have yep. two, it works, or I could charge to six and bow on his turn, but he can still just straighten, so. Right, so you gotta, yeah, you need to get more sanctions on board. Yeah, I just don't feel that bad about it. Uh, one of the reasons we didn't think official sanction was the environment deforming card that others did is because there was a lot of minor interactions that allowed you to break through the sort of soft lock of it. And then those decks tended to crumble. Alright. Did you draw? Are you set? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. You're all up. 
Uh, hey, close the line. Well, that's one really solid hold in. And then one that I'm perhaps less excited to see here. But that's okay. So I've got one attachment that I really want to put down. And then I have to think a little bit about where to go from there. Yep, so I'm going to get incendiary archers onto the board. There is some value about you know not spending any gold and trying to develop. But if you're moving in, the nature of his deck is a very all-in, push all your chips to the center, and let's see if your hand holds up. And this deck is the same sort of way when it matches up. So if I'm if I'm going to go, which almost for sure I am, because why would I wait? You might as well start committing as much to the board as you can. So I attach an incendiary archers. Of no, no it's got a fear two effect that's going to come up a decent amount in a matchup against an honor deck. <laughs> so it's a high value card. So I'll put in some Tangu's Embrace on this guy. So I have not one, but two guys that can force me to discard a card, so I'm going to use my box to draw a card. Plus, it always just makes me happy. Well, certainly that's a card. I'm going to pass. So I attached one follower, so again, I've left myself with seven gold if necessary. And uh, we start swinging all in. There's a really interesting discussion here about what's the higher value target, right? So the first instinct is always, hey, he's got a fortification. I can blow it up. We'll lose gold. We'll lose the ability to gain honor from it. But he's got a Beiru, so it's not a permanent loss. And I think I'd rather try to just prevent him from getting more people on the board. So we're going to send the whole team... <sighs> I'm taking a moment. I'm actually thinking about it. <laughs> yes, I'm going to send the whole team at the... I think about losing the zoning door to attach one more card just because. But I think I'd rather keep the full reserve ability up. So we send everybody at the Yojimbo that can do something with fear or whatever. Okay. So this is... So six. I'll count all my fours for you. So three, six. That's 18... 20, 23 force. Okay, well, and one, two, he's got seven four, range five, attacks. Six, seven. Yep. And a fear two. Fear me. Seven range attacks, most of which the largest individual one is a fear three. But he can make up to like a fear six or something. Or a range six, I'm sorry. Really interesting in that this game has actually played a lot on the board. So, <clears throat> he can go first action, shoot me. I Probably play, what I do. I can play this. So it's a question of, like, this is kind of my end game. Because it's protection and it can win a battle by itself. <clears throat> Sorry, by the way, I got a little cold or something, as I'm sure you've all figured out. He goes first, shoots my guy, cancel it, and then I have to do something really good. The plus side about playing a deck like this, about this Philippine style deck, is that he's not gonna have a lot of surprises out of his fate hand. He might have some, but he's not gonna have his, like, his of his four cards, at least two or three are gonna be followers <coughs> which which means if I can't beat him on board if I can beat him on board it's a it's a reasonable argument to defend say I lose one of the great advantages of the attack deck put him to the test baby And we should mention there's a, a tendency to be dismissive towards honor <laughs> players. People like to talk about how it's an easier deck. It just sort of sits there and buys guys full and plays his actions. Uh, and this situation really, I think, illustrates that that's not true or not true often. Uh, there's a whole lot of, is this the moment? Do I pick my spot here? How do I identify the threats? <laughs> well, this is an interesting moment because there's a, is an obvious correct. Because we're playing so much on board, there's an obvious correct answer. And so, <clears throat> to the extent that I can sit here and figure out, like, okay, he shoots a guy, I cancel it with air. I neutralize, 
certain number of ranged attacks. He makes a ranged attack destroying a certain number of battle actions. So, like, if I defend with everything, then there will be an obvious course of actions that will happen. And if I lose at the end of that obvious course of actions, I'm a terrible L5R player. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't be so hard on yourself. Well, no, I'm saying that this is all onboard stuff. It's like it's one yep. thing to get blown out to, you know, a duty of the crab out of their fate hand. It's another thing entirely to lose because you didn't see their whatever holding hidden in the pile that bows your guy. And I think a number of players have recognized that understanding the board and knowing what's going to happen is really important. Uh, sadly, there's a certain level of player that will spend a lot of time looking, trying to understand what's going to happen, and they'll even figure it out, but then they'll sort of make the wrong play. They, they'll, they'll spend their time trying to identify what's going to happen, and then they'll say, well, I know what he's going to do, and they think that because they know what's going to happen, <clears throat> somehow it'll work out differently, you know? Yeah, I hear you. All right, we're just going to try it. I'm, I'm sick of thinking, and I think I'm close. So okay. Let's give it a go. Is there anybody not there, or is it all in? This I guess Genmo. <coughs> Genmo's Genmo there. without the there. stuff. Okay. Everybody's there. So, I mean, I declare naval as an engage, sure. independent of any engages you take. I pass engage. Okay. So, the play that I've identified, I'm going to take a moment and sort of relook. But the play that I identified as liking is to actually open off the Fear 2 effect off the archers. Because Iso Akaido's unit represents two a actions. Seeking the way plus a fear. Now, if he goes to seek right away, he doesn't have that fear, but he can theoretically use two. And I can't eliminate anything with a ranged attack up front because of the ward of the air. So the play that I, I'm going to open with is Incendiary Archer's Fear 2 on Iso Akaido uh, to bow the personality, which shuts off a fear effect on his end plus the seek. And I think that's about the best I can do, knowing that I'm, I mean, I'm going to have to work through ward of air eventually. Uh, but this is the one play that I feel like I can make <clears throat> straightforwardly. Mm. So equally straightforward on my end is to pack tactics your unit with three three guys in it, Taito's unit there. That's a good one. So that takes him from seven ranged attacks to four. Okay. And so now we got to start trying to determine what the right value is. Uh, where do we start? Do we? I guess we'll start with sort of proper force representation. So Shiba Kai hasn't done an ability yet. He's still three force. Mm -hmm. Probably going to go up. I mean, any target I make here is, is eating the ward of air. So... I guess I'll go for a range two attack on what's Beru? He's a four. Let's try really hard to shoot Isoa Kamiko. Kamiko. With uh, <clears throat> Suten. Yep, yep. She's the only one there. So we definitely blow to prevent that. We like Kamiko. She's got two battle actions. Now, <clears throat> he has three ranged attacks left on board. I think. So we're going to bow her and her spell, and we're going to bow Taito. I do that because she's a juicy target. Because Beiru is the other target. He'd have to combine with his sensei to shoot Beiru, which represents... So you're, force yeah, you're using the embrace. Yep. Wow, this is, this is tricky. Well, I think I'd like... Beru is four. I'll ball full force to take off four, but with two actions. So I think I like double up the expert archers with Gadayu Sensei to shoot Agasha Beru. Okay. <clears throat> now we have to decide. So you now have eight force. Mm hmm. He's 8 force, but he has Ring of Air to straighten a guy, so he can go to 11. He'd also straighten a follower in theory to make a ranged attack. 
Yeah, it would be an archers or a spearman. It's it's hard. I think that's a play that I'd have to make. Sort of if I was losing, kind of thing. Right. It's not a very. I mean, he'd have to deal with this embrace, this unbowed stuff yeah, first. Yeah, it's it's hard to see that coming up, but it's worth. You know, it's a loophole man, like mention it kind of play. Mm-hmm. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is. Oh, We've put him in a little bit of a spot because he he doesn't have like he he does have to care about our force like he can't like he has to he has to get us lower or equal to him right like as long as I have four force to his three force I am in a positive position. We're close. It's it's just that so obviously I can favor something home. Correct. Or I can and I can play one of these cards in my hand. This. Combined with either option ties into different ways. I can play this on this unit to in combination with this tie, or I can play this on this unit to tie. If I favor home, I'm exposing myself to to sudden movement. I mean, like sudden movement plus back to the front would be like enormous blowout if I favor home. It's like straighten everything, have a million force, like lose the game on the spot, blowout. Did I surprise you with my naval fear too? Well, it it was okay. I mean, I think. I was just—I'm a little short on the math on board. I just don't know if I get better over time. I'm gonna favor home one of the captain hooks. Okay, so I've still got four to three. <laughs> At the moment, I don't have to do anything, so I just pass. So now I'm gonna play my defending the city. <sighs> okay. Well, that's less good for Paul. So guys with attachments are plus two, and he's just plus one. It's everybody's plus one, and then it's plus one for each attachment they have. Ugh. Okay, but right now you just have one unbowed guy. Yep, so we're four to four. So I, you know, I have ring of air. I straighten this guy here. And start the, the crossing fingers portion of L5R. So, like, the way that I want to play, like, this card, I'm, all I'm agonizing over is if I do it on this guy or this guy. And it's just a question of what I think he has. Because, so he's one, two, three, four, four. So they're both four, four. So he can't shoot either. I guess this is just strictly superior. So I'll play Versatile Army to straighten this Beiru. Okay, that is definitely a card. So you are eight four, four uh, eight fours to my seven. Mm. But you're out of cards in hand. Correct. Okay. So I can't shoot anything, but I mean, I just go preserve up my three force here, mm -hmm. and that is what I do for this action. I may have done some sequencing. Maybe I should have jammed him out earlier to try. Well, I can shoot something. Okay. Kamiko is zero. Kamiko is zero one two. Yep. Shoot Kamiko. Okay. So then I'll use this Sutengu's embrace to buy your guy. Yep. And then I have a reprisal to gain two force. That is, by the way, the card I drew off my Kabune port. Okay, I lose. Ha! Reprisal, baby! Does it again! I've actually never read this card. I've never realized the, the target opposed mode on that card. 
I, uh, I think I've read this card a lot, and every time I have, I was super disappointed. But, uh, you know, strict causes, different evaluations of, of cards, right? So Yeah. Um, no, it's just interesting because another object lesson in how we play this game, Reprisal's a much worse version of all the other counterattack effects. And so the first time I yep. saw it, I sort of just said, this is way worse than what I'm used to. I don't ever play this card. It sucks, and it makes me think about counterattack. Um, uh, or and, retribution, right? It's just so like, it's so never the card that you want it to be, except right here, right now. At which point, it's plus two force function is dead on good. Yeah. Well, yeah, plus two force. Yep. Well, plus three force, right? He counts himself. Oh, he counts himself. Totally, yes, totally. Well, that's hey, that's like a real card now. Yeah, yeah, he nailed it. Okay. So three, six, ten. Yep, so I mean, I kill your stuff. We're not going to keep playing it through. There's no real point. I kill all this stuff, and even though I don't have a dynasty phase, I just swing back next turn and next turn and next turn. So there was there's an argument that, <clears throat> well, clearly I should have waited another turn or two. I don't know if it gets better is the problem. So I, I, you say clearly, but I'm not actually sure, right? So if I don't buy the guy, I pull out a whole, I buy the, you know, Merchant Atoll instead, and now I'm drawing two Fate cards a turn, just using Kabune Port plus End Step, and I can convert my Fate cards in, into more Force and Battle actions. I, I don't, I don't think. Yeah. I guess you're hoping that if you can. If you can, it's just so tough for me because I, I don't think if you were the sort of deck that could run up to twenty and then have a big battle and just try to stop me. But I mean, you're five turns away from crossing three personalities. Well, right. The, the hope would be is that over the long haul, um, I eventually can build to a point where I can I can beat you. Like in all L five R games, there's a certain there's an inflection point somewhere in the game where you're. <clears throat> It's where your opponents, if your opponent is generating incremental advantage over the course of the game, and you're generating incremental advantage in the course of the game. At one point, one of you will cross this point, and someone's going to be clearly winning the game. And recognizing yep. where that point is and when it happens is important to winning L5R games, because if you defend too early before you've crossed up, then you'll lose the game. But if you defend too late after oh. your opponent's already crossed up, you'll also lose the game. So, so I'm showing you my hand, uh, so you can just see it straight up. So I was going to start drawing. I start with the fruition, which is a dead draw, but then I start drawing into Naga ambushers and spearmen, and I feel like those in concert with just buying more bodies, because where it really gets away from you is if you just let that province go, mm -hmm. and then now I'm four to two, and I'm not sure I even have to. They don't like there. There is a point where I can say, okay, I don't need to attack right now. Buy guys, buy gold, put down followers. Buy guys, buy gold, put down followers. I feel like this was probably that inflection point you were talking about. Yep. And so if I came up short here, <clears throat> well, if I came up short here, there's a question of was it the turn previous? Should I have been defending earlier? Now Should that that's an interesting thought because I don't have much to do from my hand. So you had the wall board. I like had ward seeking. Seat. It would have been tough to move all in. So this deck might just be a tough matchup for me because you go, you yeah. we go unit. I go like bow guy. You go kill a holy unit. I go bow guy. You go kill a holy unit. Yeah, the nature of your low force and the way you have to like stack your spells on units to get value out of them. I mean, I only killed like one or two guys, but those one or two guys represented three or four actions or two right. or three actions, and so that's a good swing for me. Even just the bowing of. Uh... Kamiko was yep. a lot. You know, I lose you know, two actions off that one action. Yeah, and losing the seek was really important to me. I couldn't, like, I couldn't give you the seek. In fact, I, I think if you had straightened her, I might have been in for it. Like, if you had straightened her and had a seek, I'm not sure I had a great way to come out of that. This was a thing I was thinking about. Yeah. And I mean, Seek's a great first action. It loses some value against as against the naval deck. Yep. Well, so if you had if you had straightened Kaido, you still would have had a fear whatever for the guy I buy. Oh, well, you worried he would have been shot. I guess he might have been shot. Right. So you buy her out shooter, and that's that. I had to straighten yeah, this guy, so my my options were just. I could have straight. I could have bowed your guy, 
is the only other option. Yeah, and then I still buy my guy, shoot somebody. Well, I can still Sutengu's Embrace from the Bowed Shug. Oh, that's true. So if I bow your guy, bow this guy. But then you can plus two on to Hiko, and that still gets you there. Because I'm four to four, yeah. and your reprisal still gets me. Yeah. So I was uh, just, having I was Ring of Air story. turned out to be... So this was a game <clears> where the you know the nature of Ring of Air, its sort of repeatability, came up really big for me, right? Stop the sanction was critical here at the end of the game. Well, I love the rings in general just because of that. They're powerful effects. You use them two or three times, yep. and that's why I play. We make this joke about fruition in every deck, but there's a reason for it. And, I mean, it's worth mentioning that when you build your 40 Fate card deck that most people can get 20 to 25 cards pretty easily of, like, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this. And then you start to come up with fluff, and people tend to put rings in anyway because rings are good cards. So, like, why not play this Karmic card? There you go. So, thoughts on the Mantis port of the Philippines deck? Well, pretty solid. I I think I think I need <clears> to play a bunch of games with it. The nature of the deck has a very oh, I'm steamrolling him, I'm steamrolling him, I'm steamrolling him. Decks, of course, I didn't actually feel that way this game. But like when you play a deck like this, they tend to have these games that feel very lopsided. And you just have to keep playing enough games until you start having some like real stinkers where you just sort of get steamrolled to help identify the deck's weaknesses. So one game in, it's hard to give it a fair evaluation. I do have a feeling most of my honor matchups are going to be pretty favorable just because there's no good answer to naval shoot a thing and then naval shoot another thing and more shoot things. Yeah. Uh, but I worry a lot about... like I didn't have a very forceful draw and my dynasty deck was a little clunky and I didn't really get the gold the way I wanted it to and so there's there's some adjustments I don't know if reprisal is a real card yet or not um, this game notwithstanding I don't know and I, I just need to play more games in the environment to get a clear sense but I definitely like the core of the deck I could see some of these seven gold cost guys actually go in um, just for cheaper options but, uh, I mean, I definitely feel like start with 15 followers that make ranged attacks with Lonely Dojo is a, is a good core of a deck. And ranged attacks seem to be better than what other people are doing. I don't mean... You have to worry a little bit about things like Turtle Shell. You have to worry a little bit about things like come one at a time if you don't have a good plan for it, right? There are cards and situations that I can see being very bad for me. Turtle Shell is the biggest one, right? A, a big unit, like, with an item that I try to shoot, and then they're like, ha, Turtle Shell. And I'm like, well, poop. Yeah, uh, and t Turtle Shell, but also <laughs> Come One at a Time doesn't seem like a problem for your deck at all. It seems like you just kind of laugh at Come One at a Time. Like, I defend with my 1, 2, 4, and... 2 list. Mabel shoots you. Next caller. And, of course, I'm playing Shield Wall. I have no idea what happens in a world where my opponent plays Shield Wall. You use your unholy strike and it's melee mo. Oh. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of academic exercises we can perform that say, well, this beats the deck, this beats the deck, that beats the deck. Uh, I just need to get more games in it, in with it. But I like it. I think that it's. I think Mantis is in as just a good a place in strict as they are in arc. A lot of that owes to just their stronghold being very powerful and doing powerful things. Uh, but also, Lonely Dojo in concert with ranged attacks. I, I feel good about that. So. All right. Any final thoughts? Right, nothing else. Not really. Um, you know, we're, we're coming along. We've, we've played now enough strict that I feel like we're getting a handle on the format. And uh, it's growing on us, I think we can say. I think that there's, there's enough sauce. We're talking about some other strict decks. And I think that's, that's laudable. I think that it, it speaks to... You know, we're not at a point where we should be playing strict yet, and we talked about this before, but I do think that there's enough goodness in the Ivory base set and the two expansions that have followed it that allow for, like, if if they if everything went to strict tomorrow, I'd be a little sad, but I wouldn't be heartbroken. And I think Brian Reese deserves credit for that. I think that's a laudable accomplishment, because I think it would be very easy for it to be completely unplayable right now. Yep. All right, I guess that's enough talk. If you have any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, 
feel free to send Paul a message on LinkedIn or on Instagram. <laughs> uh, you're a Tumblr guy, right? You're a big fan of the microblogging? Uh, I'm a social justice warrior, actually. I'm telling <laughs> we've got We've got some off, off, off film social justice warriorness to talk about. Well, you know, I, I'm we're after, after we're done with this. I'm gonna go play a couple, maybe Depression Quest for an hour or two. I think it's one of the best games on Steam. <laughs> Everybody should pick it up. Uh, it was Zoe very, Quinn, very highly, yeah, very highly the, reviewed. On yeah, one of the best, one of the best game designers of our generation. I think everybody should be playing this game. I'm just gonna be over here pounding my head against the wall. If anybody has any comments. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm still Jesse. That's still Paul. We'll see you next time. Hey, Liz.